and everybody's Flyboy, Flyboy's Ghost Channel. I got y'all in here out of the wind where I can talk to you a couple of minutes in my little reloading hiding spot. Pretty small, pretty cozy. But anyway, I've had a I've had a couple of view, uh, viewers, I've had a couple of subscribers, more than a couple actually, request it, that I give my take on Virginia. I like Virginia. I have been there a long time. I used to go there a lot. My family, part of my family is from Virginia, originally. Used to visit my, when I was little, visit my stepdaddy in prison up there. I remember that back in the mid to late 70s, mainly mid 70s. My take on Virginia with regards to what's going on politically, I'll try to make uh, this as concise as I can, if it's possible for me to be brief. The Democrats and Virginia's governor are declaring war on the people of Virginia. Y'all, I've been paying attention to politics, and I've been going to gun shows, and, you know, I used to think about all the militia stuff and all that. You know, I was paying attention at Ruby, well, not at Ruby Ridge, but I was paying attention to Ruby Ridge as it came down. I was paying attention to Waco as it went down. Uh, Oklahoma City bombing. I actually had people around me making a big deal about it because I was so vociferous in my opinions, and I was paying so much attention to what was going on politically in that regard. And I look back on those days and I think, well, you know, I was really, I, I was jumping the gun. I was, you know, you know how it is. I mean, there was a whole lot of things that I thought I saw immediately coming that weren't immediately coming. We know that now with hindsight. I try to apply those lessons to everything in, in modern sense. And, uh, you know, I, I tell myself not to get all excited. You know, I've done videos talking about, you know, a fight coming. Well, I believe there is a fight coming between the side that I perceive myself to be on and at least one other side. You know, that side that wants to rule people, that wants to uh, disarm you so that you can't resist their ideas for you, their plans for you, what they want. I can't do that now because these people really are trying to disarm you. And they have bad intentions. What do you do when your own governor and uh, what's going to be the uh, you know ruling party in your in your state government announce that they're going to that they want to and they plan to and I reckon they have the power to now to uh, to make a move against your rights and not only that it, that are they going to make a move against your rights to eliminate them they're going to confiscate your private property. They're going to violate your constitutional rights. And if you resist, they've already said they're going to send men with guns to make you comply. I can't sugarcoat that shit. I can't deceive myself enough to calm myself down about it. I'm not making a call to action. That would be illegal. What I am telling you, and I'm trying to choose my words carefully, is that I hate to say this, but the governor of Virginia and the legislature are truly declaring war on not only your rights in Virginia, your constitutionally protected rights and property. Some of the most basic and fundamental rights you have as a human being, not just as a, a Virginian or a, an American, but I'm talking about as a human being, the right of self-defense is one of the you know, and to the means of self-defense, to be able to defend yourself, is one of the most basic human freedoms that there is. If not the most basic. To, to me, it's the one that all of the rest are based upon. It's all of the rest are dependent upon, I should say. So my opinion is, the governor in Virginia, your governor, and your legislature is de declaring war upon you. That's really what's going on. Y'all on the 20th, I have mixed feelings about that. And I'm sure some of y'all are going to probably disagree with what I've got to say. Because while I believe wholeheartedly in straightening this shit out, 
I believe that the optics and the chance for some very, very negative things to happen on the 20th are extremely high. We know they're busting in people, the other people, and T for people, we know they're busting them in. There's too much money involved in this on the other side. We know that Bloomberg helped help this happen. Now he wants to be your president, by the way. he won't, This is his vision for all of America. But they're busting people in. They're busting in bad actors who don't behave themselves. We know they don't behave themselves. Y'all, I'm afraid that this is a recipe for disaster. For, yeah, it can go hot. It, you know, listen, y'all, if it, if they pass this stuff, if they introduce this and pass this, and the governor there signs it into law, and I can't imagine him not doing it after all they've said, and they send men with guns to your homes, you know, there's, how can I put this without getting in trouble? You have a duty as an American, you have a duty as, as uh, you have a duty to resist. And resist means fighting. I don't know any other way to put it. I'm not for, um, I'm not advocating offensive action at all. I'm advocating, I'm telling you, you've got to defend your rights. You've got to defend yourselves and your family. You know, a generation or two from now, what is to say that this party that we have seen such vitriol, such hatred, such open hatred from in this last two or three years, who's to say that our guns, and I believe this wholeheartedly, our guns in our hands are the only thing between us on this continent, in this country, in our states, and some more up-to-date scenes such as we've seen from the 20th century where unarmed, disarmed citizen, citizens and peasants were marched up to the edges of trenches and holes one after another, knowing that the people right ahead of them, they just watched them take a bullet. I'm not trying to sensationalize this. The people who hate you want to disarm you. There's a goddamn reason for that. You have to search your own hearts and minds for what you believe the answer is. I know what I believe the answer is. Y'all, I don't... The 20th, I'm not going to be nowhere near there. Even if, I, even if my wife wasn't on a mail route and didn't need me here close by in northwest Alabama, and even if I had the money, I still ain't going nowhere near that. That don't mean I won't end up in Virginia. I might. Alabama's flag's been unfurled in Virginia to fight tyranny before. By God, they can be doing it again. More than once, actually. Well, once. Predates Alabama. <laughs> the Revolutionary War predates Alabama. And all y'all calling this the possibility of a second civil war? They don't understand we ain't had a civil war on this, con on this continent before. We've had two wars of independence with nations fighting nations, well, and the first one, the continent, the Continental Army and uh, the seceded colonies fighting against Great Britain, and the second war of, of, uh, of independence on this, con on this uh, continent, it was two nations fighting each other. One to stop independence after one had went for independence. So this isn't going to be a second civil war. This looks to me like this very well could be a civil war. Please, God, don't let it happen. But one of the people that uh, from uh, the 18th century that I like the most, or at least I like reading about him, and I like reading the things he says, Patrick Henry. And I don't believe that life is so dear and peace is so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. Forbid it, Almighty God. Life should not be so dear and peace so sweet as to go into servitude, slavery, and put your children and your grandchildren in harm's way. Did we not just see the value of arms in the hands of the people in a church in Texas? And I know those idiots on the other side, my left is your right, but you know what I'm saying. On the left-hand side, those idiots said uh, they, they believe that that they can weigh this magic uh, regulation wand in the modern terms of regulation and guns are going to disappear. It's, no, they're not going to disappear. They will be millions. If you go around and if we had a nationwide, even if people, even if 90%, 95% of the, 
of the people who are law-abiding, and those ain't the ones y'all got to worry about. Turn in the guns that you can find that you know about. I wonder how many tens of millions more, if not a hundred million more, guns would still be floating around in the United States. And who the hell do you think is going to be using them? I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm talking about that other son bitch that just stopped right there who's not on our side. What kind of idiotic lunacy, what kind of drugs are you on? You know, there's a difference in the sword that takes life and the sword that gives life. And it's all about the man who wields it. Hundreds of thousands of times to millions, according to the CDC, times a year, guns are used in defense of life. Property and liberty, I'm sure, is in there too. But in defense of life. What makes you idiots think that things are going to get better if those hundreds of thousands of, or million, millions of people can't defend themselves? With a wave of your magic wand, you just created millions of potential victims. That's not going to be myself, my wife, not going to be my kids, it's not going to be my grandkids. So guess what? Your threats, Governor Northam and to the Virginians, and any of you other little tin pot dictators who think you want to follow suit, you are not. You are making a life and death threat to us, to my children, my grandchildren, and generations yet unborn. What damn choice are you giving us but to resist? All y'all that go to Richmond on the twentieth, watch you back. The best thing y'all could possibly do is plan some meaningful resistance for the moment that all of this stuff is passed because it's probably going to pass no matter what y'all are doing. And all those leftist news organizations from A through Z are standing there waiting. They're chomping to bit. They've already got the stories and the headlines wrote. They're waiting on something to happen so they can paint us on our side as the biggest flipping idiots. The mo you're all going to be white nationalists. I hope you understand that. Trump's going to be blamed. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't doubt those extra articles of impeachment against Trump somehow for uh, Jim Bob from Arkansas or, or Minnesota showing up there to defend, you know, to make a statement about uh, his Second Amendment rights and, and backing up the people of, of Virginia and their Second Amendment rights because they see that this is a flood that's going to that's going to cross the nation. There is a um, there's no doubt that, that there's going to be, I think, there's going to be something happen, and I think we're going to look terrible, and that's going to be, a, it's probably going to be manufactured. So, I'm not too sure I'd go if I'm y'all, but y'all do what you want to. I believe most of you, probably 90% of his hearts are in the right place. I don't doubt your grit. I don't doubt, you know, I may admire you, your, uh, your grit, but I might wonder about your judgment. And that don't mean that I think bad of you for wanting to stand up. I understand I want to stand up. I think there's, they think there's uh, going to be a whole lot of cameras and the world's going to be looking. And I think that's a perfect opportunity for some of these things that something to go down that seems mighty opportune and, and advantageous to the other side for optics. Hopefully I'm wrong. While I'm at it, hopefully Virginia's governor is going to change his mind. Hopefully, uh, Democrats will get a boatload of sense and we won't have no more of this shit to deal with. I ain't hope, too hopeful that's going to come to pass. Though. So, I, I wouldn't call myself a fudge. You know, I grew up with, uh, grew up with, from teenager years, some automatic handguns were my first handguns. Some automatic rifles left and right. I was into everything from... You name it, the AKs, the SKSs, the FNFALs, I've had them, I've had, you know, set me C-308, G-3, uh, you know, clones, some automatic G-3 clones, even an AR here or there, and a whole bunch of AKs, and, you know, y'all, I got out of all that stuff. Appreciate y'all watching. I gotta go practice. Talk to you later.